this video, we shall be continuing the discussion of bleeding in early pregnancy. So just as a recap, we said that there are four causes of bleeding. These are implantation bleed, ectopic pregnancy, miscarriage, and molar pregnancy. In the previous video, I've already discussed implantation bleed and ectopic pregnancy. Now I'm going to start off by discussing miscarriage. So a miscarriage is when the fetus dies before 24 weeks of pregnancy. Miscarriages are very common and occur in 20% of pregnancies. And there are different types of miscarriages. We've got a threatened miscarriage when the patient presents with bleeding, a closed cervical loss, and the fetus is still alive. Therefore, it is referred to as a threatened miscarriage because there is the threat of death. A missed miscarriage is when the patient is completely asymptomatic with no bleeding. A closed cervical loss, but the fetus is dead. Inevitable miscarriage is when there is bleeding PV with an open cervical loss and the fetus is still alive. The miscarriage at this point is inevitable because the baby is going to die. Incomplete miscarriage is when there is bleeding PV with passage of some of the products of conception and an open cervical loss. Because not all of the POCs have been passed, it is referred to as incomplete. On the other hand, a complete miscarriage is when all of the POCs have been passed, the cervical loss is closed and bleeding is now decreasing. Patients can also present with a septic miscarriage, which is a miscarriage with signs of infection. They have endometritis with infected POCs. A lot of these patients ask, what did I do wrong? Many patients feel guilty and think that this is a result of something they might have done. It is important to reassure them, to explain that miscarriages are very common and also explain the possible causes. So that leads us nicely onto the risk factors um, for having a miscarriage. And we can divide these into fetal and maternal risk factors. So the most common cause of a miscarriage is fetal chromosomal abnormalities, which cause 50% of miscarriages. Others include fetal malformations and infections. Maternal causes for a miscarriage include uterine malformations, immunological causes such as antiphospholipid syndrome, abnormal placentation, advanced maternal age, multiple pregnancy, stress, chronic illness, example diabetes and thyroid disease, obesity and smoking. As a side note, recurrent miscarriage is when there are three or more miscarriages in succession and these patients are usually referred to the miscarriage clinic. Okay, so how do we diagnose a miscarriage? Diagnosis is carried out by doing a transvaginal ultrasound scan where we look at two main measurements. These are the GSD, which is the gestational sac diameter, and the CRL, the crown rump length. So if we take a look at this image over here, we can see these structures. So here we've got the gestational sac, which is the large cavity of fluid surrounding the embryo. The yolk sac, which is a membrane outside the embryo connected by a tube, the yolk stalk, which passes through the umbilical opening to the midgut of the embryo and it acts as the primitive placenta, which supplies nutrients in the embryo. And here we've got the embryo. So basically the GSD is the mean diameter of the gestational sac, and the crown rump length is the distance from the crown, the head of the fetus to the rump, the buttocks of the fetus. And in this image, we can more clearly understand how this would be measured. In a viable pregnancy, we would also be able to see a small flicker on the ultrasound, which represents the fetal heart. So, we can diagnose a miscarriage if the GSD is greater or equal to 25 millimeters with no obvious yolk sac, or if the fetal pole has a CRL greater or equal to 7 millimeters with no evidence of fetal heart activity. These will confirm the presence of a miscarriage. Now, if on the other hand, the GSD is less than 25 millimeters with no yolk sac, or the CRL is less than 7 millimeters with no fetal heart, the ultrasound must be repeated in around 7 to 10 days, which will give the time for the pregnancy to grow. Moving on to management now. 
So there are three options of management. First, we have the conservative option, where we watch and wait for the patient to pass products of conception spontaneously. And the patient must be followed up appropriately. Then we have medical management, where we use misoprostol as vaginal tablets. There's also an oral option, but we usually use the vaginal route. Repeated doses can be given. An ultrasound is always performed after medical management to make sure that all the POCs have been passed. If on the ultrasound the endometrial thickness is less than 3 cm, then we are happy and the medical management is considered successful. The surgical option involves an ARPC, which is an evacuation of retained products of conception. This is a minor procedure which is carried out under general anaesthetic, which involves the removal of the POCs using suction. This is carried out when there is failed medical management, so your endometrial thickness on ultrasound is more than 3 cm, or because of patient preference, heavy bleeding, or if there is a septic miscarriage. Risks of this procedure include uterine perforation, as the curette creates a hole in the uterus, as the uterus is more fragile during pregnancy as well as infection and bleeding. Great. So that's all you need to know about miscarriage. I hope that this video was helpful. In my next video, I shall be discussing molar pregnancy. Thank you.